Good morning, bakers, and welcome back to my channel. This morning, we're going to do a southern favorite. First of all, we know everyone loves pound cake in the south, and we also know everybody loves sweet potatoes in the south. So, we're just going to combine the two. We're going to make a sweet potato pound cake today. I promise you're going to love it, and it's going to have a little warmth of rum added to it. Stick around. Let's get started. I think for the most part, you'll find that this is a pretty easy recipe. The key is preparation and staying on top of your time so as to not overbeat this cake. Uh, that's key to keeping it moist, light, fluffy, all the things that we love about a pound cake. So as normal with a pound cake, I always start with three sticks of butter. Uh, you can use whatever brand you like, but I try to use uh, a butter with a lower water content in it and for me that that's Tillamook they make the best, best dairy product so far uh, that's what I enjoy and of course as always you want your butter to be room temperature so that this part of the uh, process is much easier we're gonna whip that butter and now we're gonna cream it with uh, half a cup of brown sugar now even though we are making a sweet potato pound cake, sweet potatoes are a little more savory than maybe you would expect. So that's why the extra sugar in here, we're adding brown sugar along with granulated sugar. And we're just going to let that uh, butter and sugar cream together. Now the brown sugar, the difference in the white sugar, which we're adding three cups of white sugar. The white sugar has those crystals that cut through the butter and produce little air pockets in it and that's what gives it that fluffiness. And we're just going to let that uh, butter and sugar cream together until it, it kind of resembles uh, Play-Doh or wet sand, whichever description you prefer. But it wants you want it to be kind of coarse and crumbly in your hand, almost like a cookie dough that's not completely formed yet. And if your butter is good and soft, that won't take long. That process won't take you long at all. I would say no more than three minutes, maybe. And then you can go ahead and start adding your eggs. Um, I'm going to use six eggs here. And I'm adding one at a time. As you can see, as you add those eggs, the consistency will, will change, which is to be expected. Eggs, eggs are an emulsifier. This is what holds your... Uh, holds anything together in any recipe uh, it stops all of your ingredients from just you know falling apart I mean you can bake a wonderful lovely cake but if you don't have something to hold all those ingredients together it's gonna be real sad for you so that's what the eggs are used for and by the way sometimes when you have a recipe where you have to separate your dry and your wet ingredients I've mentioned this before in other videos sugar is sometimes counted as a wet ingredient because it adds moisture so that's another reason why there's so much sugar in this cake it seems like a lot but I promise you it won't make your cake taste overly sweet because like I mentioned before the the surprising maybe surprising to some savoriness of a sweet potato so you can see the batter is it's it's going from initially it looked like a dough now it's forming more coming into shape as a batter than anything else we've got all of our egg, eggs added in and just as soon as they are fully combined then we start adding our extracts that's one now this is where you get that flavor from uh, someone once told me if the cake doesn't smell good initially it won't taste good now this right here is banana extract I'm going to add in a few squeezes of it. Uh, if you care to measure it out, I, I generally don't, but I would say about uh, two teaspoons of banana extract. And the same here with this maple extract, which is not maybe your first thought when it comes to adding the extract to, your, um, to any cake, but it works well with this. Now this right here is some white vanilla essence. I had a friend bring me back some of this when she uh, visited her home in Antigua and it's it's wonderful usually I use this in a say for instance I'm making a frosting and I don't want the color of vanilla to change the color of the frosting or anything that's clear I use it there but I use it here because of the 
uh, powerful flavor that it packs. You can do, use a regular vanilla uh, extract or a vanilla bean paste instead, whatever you have available. All right, now that's a nutmeg there. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna be pretty generous with this nutmeg. Maybe about a tablespoon and a half. And I prefer fresh nutmeg over something that's already ground. And if you use fresh nutmeg in any of your uh, recipes, you'll instantly see the difference. You'll instantly see the difference. And do, we're doing the same here with cinnamon, about uh, a tablespoon of cinnamon. And again, I prefer the fresh, I prefer to uh, grind it myself. The flavor is much more intense. Now with this ginger, the reason I didn't use fresh ginger is because it's so powerful. I didn't want too much ginger. I just wanted maybe perhaps a hint of ginger in this recipe. So I use like half a teaspoon and a teaspoon of salt. Uh, I would choose to use uh, non-iodized salt over iodized salt. And we're going here with some uh, baking powder. I think this is like three tablespoons. I meant to say, yeah, three tablespoons of uh, baking powder. I'll, I'll put the exact measurements in the in the uh, description. <clears throat> now we're just gonna let those combine. It won't take long. And now this is the reason why I say uh, preparation is key in this recipe. Because if you have all of your ingredients already uh, measured out, already ready to go like I did not, <laughs> And then you'll save yourself a lot of time and you want to be kind of Johnny on the spot with okay now it's time to add this ingredient it's time to add the next ingredient so that you don't overbeat uh, this batter because it's very important with the pound cake you don't want it to be overbeaten because you want that fluffiness that airiness that what we enjoy so much about a pound cake now I'm adding <clears throat> three cups of flour and instead of using uh, milk, buttermilk, or cream, or another dairy, I'm choosing to use um, full fat cream cheese here. A block of cream cheese. That's going to add some moisture. That's going to add some creaminess. That's going to add some flavor that uh, you might not get if you had to use another dairy product. Now this uh, cream cheese, just like the butter, is also room temperature. You can let it sit out all day. Depending, I guess, depending on the temperature of your, your home as well. Yeah, let it sit out all day and let it get nice and soft. Because when you, you throw it in here, you don't want to have any clumps of cream cheese. Which is another reason why I turn my mixer up a little bit higher. So that I can make sure that I, it's all incorporated and there's no lumps or clumps anywhere of that cream cheese. And we just alternate it with the flour. Back and forth, back and forth, adding the cream cheese and last. And it's important as well as when you start to add that flour, make sure you turn your, your speed down because you don't want it to blow all up in your face. That would be, it might be funny, but at the same time, you don't want it flying all over the place. So we've added in the last bit of our cream cheese and we're gonna let that combine for a while. Now that that's done, we're going to add our sweet potato. So my sweet potato, I let it bake in the oven for a while first. But I'm using this uh, overproof rum, but not much of it. I'm adding the overproof for the for to add a little more heat to it, so to speak. But for the flavor, I'm just using uh, Meyer's original dark rum. That that I mean that I can't even explain to you how good that flavor is. I'm gonna put a little bit directly into the batter as well. The, the, the flavor that that uh, Meyer's original dark provides is out of this world. Now this potato is very hot. Now as you can see, it's not cooked all the way through. I did want to, uh, it wasn't necessary for it to be cooked all the way. Now another thing you can do here, instead of how I'm doing it, mixing this by hand, you can throw all of this into the food processor. I mean, once you get the skin out from around it, 
uh, instead of, you know, like I'm about to do mash it up with my hand, you could throw it into a food processor and be done in, who knows, five seconds. You could just pulse it right quick. But I added a little brown sugar and I'm about to mash it all up with a fork. And you're going to watch how all of that rum that I put in the bottom, watch how this, this potato just soaks it right up. So it's fully incorporated in there. And it's it's adding so much flavor to this cake. Now I will say this as well: you can use up to three sweet potatoes in 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 this recipe. There's a lot of room for versatility in this. I chose one because it for me on doing a trial run, it added enough sweet potato flavor to where I was 100% certain. Okay, yeah, this is a sweet potato pound cake. You hate when you bake something and you tell someone, oh yeah, this is this or that and they're like well i'm not really getting the flavor the sweet potato one will, will do it enough for you but you can add more you can add up to three sweet potatoes about medium size or you can add if you find sometimes you find those abnormally sized sweet potatoes one of those larger ones this one was just one medium sized one but it added enough sweet potato flavor that um well everyone who tried it they were Satisfied, and they were like, "Yeah, that's a good sweet potato pe cake." And the f the aroma of this, when you take it out of the oven as it's baking, someone could walk in your home and be like, "Man, are you making a sweet potato pie?" No, but I am making a sweet potato pound cake. So, the one sweet potato is enough flavor. Some people choose to add um, food coloring here. I do not. I just prefer. Whatever it comes out of the oven looking like, that's good enough. Okay, so <clears throat> our batter is done now. I'm just scraping down this this uh, pot, this bowl to get all the flavor. You know, make sure I got all of the, not flavor, but I'm saying everything out from the bottom of the bowl. <clears throat> and it's about ready to go in the oven. Now, earlier in this video, y'all saw me in the beginning, and I always like to look nice, and I was wearing what's commonly referred to as a window pane suit. Now, the window pane pattern has its origins in the 20s, when fashion was starting to take a turn for a better. It was an alternative to the pinstripe suit, but it really took off in the 30s and 40s, and, and, and people began to respect it more, but I will say this. If you can get you a pinstripe and a window pane suit, have them both in your collection. All right, that knife has come out clean. This cake is good and ready to go. But there's one last little step. Like I said, we're going to add a little heat of rum to this. So going back to my favorite, Meyer's Original Dark. And I'm just going to take it and pour it directly on top of there. I mean, it is... You don't have to worry about your cake getting soggy right now because that hard exterior, that crust on the outside, it's going to soak it up, push it, excuse me, push it back in the oven, turn the oven off, let it sit in there for a minute. And as you can see, it's not wet or soggy on the top. I took it out after about 10 minutes. And well, it's beautiful right now, but we're not done. Remember that bowl where I crushed up those sweet potatoes? I left some in there intentionally so I could make this glaze. Yet again, we're going with the Overproof. This is by a company called Ray and Nephew. This rum is amazing. I mean, it is really amazing. As you see, you don't need much of it. <laughs> Excuse me. Even if you're making like... I had a friend. He made some kind of drink for us. I can't remember, but it didn't take much. It's powerful. So just remember that. And the original dark again so all we need to add now is some powdered sugar and we'll have a nice glaze and please and I and the reason I, I put this graphic on the screen like comment and share I hope you like this video and if you do please subscribe to even more videos but it's also important to me to hear your voice if you have a comment about how you would do it what you would prefer please let me know because uh, Learning is something that I, I really do enjoy, especially when it comes to baking. And if you really liked it, share it with a friend who's also a fellow baker. Now this uh, 
this is not a, a precise recipe. You play with this until you get it to the consistency that you want. Uh, but these are the ingredients that you need. The, the rum and the powdered sugar. You don't have to necessarily have the overproof rum. And lemon juice. Lemon juice is a surprising ingredient that you, you, you'll find you need it in many things that will surprise you. Not necessarily to add lemon flavor to it. Well, it does do that if you, you know, use it, um, more of it. But it also, I just needed a liquid to add to this to get it to the right consistency. And lemon juice is so powerful. It does so many things in your kitchen. It's amazing. So I just added a little bit of, and I just went back and forth and played with it a little bit until I got it to the consistency I wanted. And of course, we cannot forget vanilla. Now, I use this uh, vanilla extract here, which is different from what I used earlier. And in this instance, I don't mind the darker color that the vanilla may add to it because it's a uh, because it, it's kind of reminiscent of the color of the rum. So I'm OK with that. A little bit of powdered cinnamon. The reason I use powdered here and, and not earlier is because the flavor that I want in the cake, it, it can be a little bit different than what I'm getting on my glaze. So it's not really necessary for that cinnamon to be a really strong and potent flavor in this glaze. I, want the, I, want, I really want the rum to be the star flavor in this glaze. And now we're adding a little bit more sugar. And we're just going to keep working with it back and forth. And I'm trying to make sure I get uh, uh, the remnants of that sweet potato in there too. This is going to be a wonderful glaze. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. You can use this also on cinnamon rolls. Oh my goodness, that is that is amazing. Anything that requires an, an icing slash glaze, this is a good little recipe. Now, that's the consistency. I want it right there. Something where I can, you know, drizzle it. So now that we've got that done, let's bring in our sweet potato pound cake. Now look at this, it is beautiful and dark, but not dark uh, so that the exterior is hard, but it does have a nice crust on the outside. And when you cut into this thing, man, I mean, the explosion of the aroma of the sweet potato and the rum together, <laughs> It just hits you like a Mack truck. It is beautiful. It's 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 amazing. You're gonna love it. This is this may end up being a family favorite of yours for years to come if you've never tried it before. I really hope you enjoy it. And this is oh well, those are my pecan pieces that I'm gonna put on top too. If you're allergic to nuts, just leave them out. It's it's not really a big deal. It's not even necessary. That was just my personal preference. Now first I put some glaze on it then pecans then glaze back and forth like that so the pecans will stick uh, more to it when I shared this with friends that made it easier to transport the pecans being stuck on there it was just amazing I really loved how this turned out and, I, and I'm pretty sure that you and your family will love it as well and if you enjoyed this video as a reminder at the beginning please do subscribe now will post many more videos and I do have an entire pound cake playlist that you can enjoy different flavors of pound cakes pound cake is like I mentioned earlier a southern favorite I'm from Georgia so we got all kinds of pound cakes you can eat so if you enjoy this video please do subscribe check out my other videos I'll have a couple that you can check out on screen at the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed this. Now you can see this is a simple, easy um, way to decorate your cake. I'm not really good at decorating a cake, but this was, I mean, this made it really easy right here. It's attractive, it's appealing, and it's because it says, you know, we eat with our eyes first. So when, if you're presenting this to someone, they, as soon as they look at it, they'll be like, oh my goodness, what is this? It looks so good. They don't even know what flavor it is and they want to slice immediately just because of how it looks. So I try to make um, everything I make, I try to make it somewhat appealing to the best of my ability. Like I said, I'm not a cake decorator. I wish I was. I wish I had a talent like that. But this is not necessary with a pound cake. And this pound cake, it turned out far better than I could have imagined. I mean, it's the perfect size, perfect shape, perfect height. 
this is a big cake recipe so remember that you can even take this and make instead of in a tube pan you can make two separate loaf pound cakes it's just that big of a, a cake so whatever your preference is you can sometimes I feel like you know if I don't give away half of the stuff I bake out I'll, I'll be far out of shape more out of shape than I want to be so I will sometimes make those two loaves instead of this one big uh, one big two pan cake sometimes I'm making it in a bunt pan so the options are pretty much endless it's up to you so this is what she looks like in all her glory I hope you make this recipe if you do please leave me a comment if you have any more questions about if you have any questions about how this uh, recipe goes down please leave me a comment and if you like this video make sure you hit the thumbs up I cannot tell you how important that is for us content creators but most importantly, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And whatever you do, keep baking.